Hey guys, it's Jack from Historical Weapons, and today we're going to check out this Han Dynasty fiberglass reproduction bow. So these bows are based on the archaeological finds of northwestern modern-day China. In a region where there's a lot of ethnic groups, such as Central Asians, even Scythians, such as the Tocharians, the uh, Han people, of course, were there as well, and the Xiongnu. So a mix of ethnicities were there, and this is the kind of bow that was found. So I wouldn't particularly call this a Chinese bow, it's just discovered in modern-day China. That's the best term I can give. That being said, it's made in the modern country, China, uh, for a modern reproduction. So I guess technically you can still call it a Chinese bow in that sense. And that M shape is quite definitive of later bows in the Eastern Asian influences as well as Central Asia. And later on it even became popular in Eastern Europe. Um, the kind of bow that later the Mongols used, the Sasanians, it doesn't mean that the earliest ones are made of horn and sinew. It could have been made of steam bent bamboo, uh, or laminated bamboo with wood, or it could be, you know, just bamboo back with sinew. So one of my favorite things about these bows is the longer ears. That allows a longer draw. But I can see some practical sense of doing that because, you know, longer ears means less horn being used for the same amount of draw length, which means you don't have to wait for the, the animal to grow the horn longer. This means it facilitates uh, ma master production uh, than a shorter ear bow because you're going to have to wait for those horns to grow uh, a little bit longer. And in, in a mass produced scale, for example, 200,000 bows, that does make a difference. Um, of course, we're assuming the same draw length here. Uh, for the shorter horn bow, you can just have a shorter draw length to accommodate that instead. Now, you got to keep in mind, Han Dynasty uh, archers didn't just use these kind of bows. They also had long bows, especially in the south with bamboo bows. And um, they didn't have just horn sinew bows. It really depends on the region of the Han Empire. Uh, in the south, more bamboo mixed with wood. And then in the northwest, more horn sinew. It's because of the geography, so that makes sense. That being said, uh, there are later sources that mention the bamboo and wood bowls are better for the more humid climates because the high glue uh, and the sinew, they get weaker over time. They start wearing off with the humidity. And that's always an issue in southern China, uh, which is why I think they prefer more of the, uh, the, the self wood bowls or just bamboo bowls instead. But northwest is so dry, you don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. That's good for 28 inches. Let's try a further draw length. 30 inches is good, more power. I love it. Now, when it comes to the Han Dynasty archers, they typically had a backup melee weapon, whether that was a saber, a short spear, or even improvised hammers and hatchets. Sometimes you're gonna be expected to be in a melee, so it's always nice to have a backup melee weapon. Plus, they can be used as tools for repairing and making um, things that you need in the field as well. So I can see a hatchet being very practical for Han Dynasty archers when sabers are not available. That being said, the most important job of the Han Dynasty archer is to shoot arrows. And I can see a more elite archer with some armor, but with a lot of arrows. Because your job is to do that. Um, you'll have other folks to protect you like pikemen and shieldmen, but you gotta be shooting arrows. Now with crossbowmen, I can see them having even more ammunition because the crossbows are even smaller in terms of the ammunition size itself. Um, but of course the crossbow itself is bigger, but that's a whole different topic. But the archers are, are you know, better at shooting at tight formations. With a crossbow you have to tilt it, but even still you can't get as compact of a tight formation as archers can. So that could be used better for pike formations or at really like tight, uh, you know, walls where there's a lot of people lined up. Archers would be great in that kind of role as well. So this specific bow can handle 32 inches, so let's see if it can do that. Unfortunately, I only have arrows that are 1,200 grain, so this arrow is going to shoot really, really slow. But at 32 inches, let's see if this bow can handle it. That's when I'm more interested. There's my... Ooh! Oh, it stacks. It really stacks at that 31... 32! And <laughs> that arrow shot like 100 FPS, but with the 1,200 grain, of course. But it does handle 32 inches. That's pretty impressive. Wow. So, here's my 31, 32. But I can definitely feel the stack. It feels like that bow's not going to push any further. If I try any further, I feel like it's going to break. 
does shoot though. <laughs> So what do I think about this bow? Well, besides the arrow pass that keeps wearing out, which is really cheap pleather, I'm happy with most of the things of this bow. Very cheap, so was it 70 bucks? So, uh, and quite historically ac accurate. Now the biggest difference of the Han Dynasty long-eared bows compared to, say, the Son Dynasty long-eared bows is that the Han Dynasty ones would have had more bone reinforcement at the seas and at the handles. We also see this of similar era Roman style Yurtsi bows as well. So it just seems like bone was preferred in the antiquity, but by the Song Dynasty, you have less bone reinforcement for the seas. Uh, in China at least, but in Hungary or Magyar, that's a different topic. But this specific reproduction doesn't have the bone reinforcement for pretty good reasons. One is that trying to ship bone from China to another country, while well, some of those companies do, some of those uh, customs don't like that. But they can call this bow whatever they want. Calling this a ham bow could just imply that Han ethnic people use the bow. If that's the context, well, all of these bows are valid. I mean, Han people, yes, use these bows, along with many other ethnic groups. So sure, we call this a Han bow then because, you know, they use the bow. Done. Period. Problem solved. I like the way think of thinking that way. You don't say the word Han Dynasty bow, just Han bow, then problem solved. Everyone's happy. And you add the word D in the end, hand bow, using your hands while well, even more broad and more ambiguous. So sure, why, why not?